Last summer, I built a solar-powered autonomous catamaran tugboat that I would hook up to my inflatable kayak and have it pull me around the waterways of Seattle. Although it was definitely a fun and novel idea, it turned out that dealing with two boats was exactly two times as much of a pain as dealing with one boat, especially when trying to dock and launch and stuff like that. So this year, I decided to upgrade to something a little more practical. And what's more practical than a 1972 13-foot Boston Whaler Supersport? Turns out, almost anything is more practical at least more practical than the one I bought. I found it for pretty cheap on Craigslist, but it was a real fixer-upper and needed a lot of work before it would be seaworthy. My plan for this thing is to eventually power it with electric motors and add solar panels to the sides so that it can be used for long-distance boat camping trips and stuff like that. Now, in reality, this is far from the optimal hull design to use for that sort of thing, because Boston whalers are designed for stability at high speeds, not efficiency at low speeds, which is what I'll be going for most of the time. But I wanted something that I could also use for higher speed driving and was easy to transport and store, and this happens to be a nice little compact boat. So I bought this one and towed it home. That in and of itself turned out to be a big adventure. Uh, I'm about halfway from Portland to Seattle and I decided to crawl under here and look around and uh, that doesn't look too good. Probably should have inspected that more closely before starting the drive, but the trailer made it back with the axles intact, so all is well that ends well. My goal for this year is just to get this boat restored and out on the water, but I'll be adding the solar panels over the winter. I got six of these big 175 watt flexible solar panels from Renogy. These will be attached to the sides like wings, so that they can fold in and out. I also got their Rover 60 amp MPPT charge controller, and one of their 24 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. I'll be testing out a few different batteries for this boat, including the awesome 12S8P 2170 lithium ion pack from Duck Battery in Portland. Shout out to them for hooking me up with this awesome battery. I'll be putting it to the test in the next few videos. And shout out to the one and only Colin Fox for letting me borrow his carport tent to use as a place to do the boat restoration. This was super nice to have because the boat wouldn't fit in the garage. Before buying this boat, I was thinking about trying to rebuild the front end on this one that Colin's friend had crashed into a pole while driving at night, but decided against it because the open cell foam that's inside the hull was waterlogged. Wet foam is bad news for these boats because it's almost impossible to dry out the inside so I decided against doing that. Boston whalers are famous for being unsinkable. This is because they are basically a foam fiberglass sandwich. On the outside of the fiberglass, there's a layer of gel coat. Gel coat is a polyester-based resin coating that is basically used as a protective outer coating on all molded fiberglass boats. So if you want to join me on this journey of learning about boat repair, remember this diagram because it's what we're working with. So now let's take a closer look at my boat. There are quite a few spots like this with damaged gel coat and fiberglass, mostly along the outer rail of the boat. I put this yellow tape over the holes to keep the rainwater out. The guy who owned it before me had tried to do some repairs but didn't get very far. Actually, it probably would have been better if he hadn't done anything at all because there was a lot of spots where he put new fiberglass over old weak gel coat which is a bad idea because the fiberglass will just delaminate from the boat where the old gel coat cracks. This was a big problem with the bottom of the hull. At first I thought the inside of the boat was in relatively good condition and that I wouldn't need to do hardly any work on it, but as we'll find out, that was not the case. And I bought it from a guy who had it as a project boat, he was trying to restore it, and I think the guy before him who had it was also just trying to restore it. So, definitely not in the best shape, but I got it for pretty cheap. One of the previous owners had painted over all the original gel coat, probably because it was damaged from years in the sun, and they were trying to add a layer of protection on top. So this is kind of what we're dealing with here. This uh, darker blue under here is the gel coat, or the original gel coat maybe, I think. And then there's this lighter blue paint on top of that. So I'm having to sand off all of that paint. For all the flat surfaces, I was able to use an orbital sander, which worked okay. But for all the curves and corners, I had to sand it by hand. Or at least that's what I did at first. I knew I had a lot of work ahead of me, but it ended up being about probably five times more work than I thought it would. I tried paint stripper at this stage, but the paint turned out to be the least of my worries. I just 3D printed this multiple radius block for sanding corners. You just put sandpaper around it and you got three different or four different options on different radius sizes. As I was removing more and more paint, I was realizing that the gel coat underneath was going to be a problem. What you doing? Uh, just uh, making a trough to hold a... Uh... Hold some briquettes. Looks like a nice boat. So this whole area down here is gonna be a real pain. Um, I ground through a little bit of fiberglass and hit foam already, so I think the fiberglass in here is already really thin. I'm probably gonna need to grind all of this out and then re-fiberglass over all that. So if you look close enough, you'll see all these little cracks in the gel coat. 
So what I'll have to do is Dremel those out and then put fairing compound or thickened epoxy in there to um, fill them and then sand it smooth. See all those cracks? That's gotta go. Let me take a break from this boat to tell you about my favorite auction site, Deal Dash. Deal Dash is an online auction site that turns buying things into an exciting game. Not only is it fun, but you can also get some screaming deals. Instead of just bidding the highest price you're willing to pay like a normal auction site, Deal Dash works by increasing the price of an item by one cent every time a bid is placed. If you're the highest bidder when the clock runs out, you won. PS5s have sold for as little as 50 cents iPads for $33, and brand new cars for under $1,000. And these aren't even used items. Deal Dash only sells brand new merchandise. You can get bids by purchasing a bid pack, but you can also get free bids through promotions. I had a lot of fun trying to win this drone, but I think I ended up bidding a bit too soon, so I think I need to rethink my strategy. I also was trying to win this chainsaw on their mobile app. I got so close to winning, but then I got outbid. I'll get it next time. It ended up selling for really cheap. All auctions start at $0, and shipping is always free. They have a 90-day money-back guarantee on your first bid pack purchase. Visit dealdash.com slash rctest and use promo code rctest to get $10 of free bids with your first bid pack purchase. Now back to the video. So a lot of the gel coat in this area was chipping quite a bit, so I just started grinding away at it with the Dremel. And as I was moving over and over, I just kept noticing more and more cracked spots in the gel coat, so I'd kind of start to grind at those a little bit, and then they would just flake out. So I just went nuts and kind of did a bunch of grinding and this is all going to need to be covered in fairing compound or thickened epoxy. But now I'm wondering if all of this is bad and I should just try and get rid of all that gel coat. Yes, this was as painstaking as it looks. There was a lot of crappy gel coat that had to be removed. So I had my work cut out for me, that's for sure. What you working on in here, Russell? Oh, a uh, pig smoker. A pig smoker? And a whole hog roaster. Wow, you're gonna roast a whole hog, huh? It's a whole hog. That's, That's pretty neat. It does smell like oil. This is like some fiberglass that someone put over the gel coat, so. That's not good right there. I gotta try and get under that. Right in here, I can see that there's some cracks in the original gel coat, so that's probably why they tried to fiberglass over it. Someone, I think someone did a bad repair job on this before. I tried wire brushing the gel coat off, but that didn't really work. And hand sanding, it's not really an option because it's really thick compared to paint. Here, I was using a Dremel to open up all the cracks in the gel coat to then fill in later with fairing compound. This is usually the proper way to repair it, but the gel coat was so bad that chunks were popping out. So putting in new fairing compound in between the cracks probably wasn't going to be a super robust solution. This is when I realized that I was going to need a better tool for removing gel coat, so I got some sandpaper flap wheels for my Dremel, and these helped a lot. But basically, just I just needed to find all that weak gel coat and just completely grind it down to the fiberglass. So that sucks. It's a lot of work. It's especially going to be super difficult um, in tight corners like this. But if I want the new gel coat to uh, not crack, that's what I'm going to have to do. I also got a variable speed angle grinder with a sanding wheel. And wowee, what a tool that is. It grinds through gel coat so fast it's crazy. Actually a little too fast to be honest. I've been able to get quite a bit off with the Dremel, but it leaves a pretty rough surface down there, but hopefully the fairing compound will fill that in. Let's go see how the pig roaster's doing. How much did it cost? It's way cheaper. 160 bucks. 160 bucks? <laughs> Whole ass hog. Wow. It's like Christmas. Are you excited, Truck Daddy? Oh boy. I'm excited. <laughs> That's definitely some good party. Wow! Whoa. It's a whole hog! Wow, wait, that's pretty big. <laughs> that's a, a lot of meat. Good sized little guy. Wow, do have enough time to thaw it? I was vacuuming up as much gel coat as I could using my 3D printed cyclone separator that I made a few videos back. So I used this angle grinder with a sanding attachment to get most of the gel coat off of these areas. That was a lot. So now I'll use a Dremel with a sanding attachment to get all these little other bits so that I don't 
eat away too much of the fiberglass with this gnarly thing. I'm gonna defrost this pig. Wow, that's a nice oil drum. I cleaned it out as best I could. Still smells like oil though. You think this water might be too cold to defrost it? Um, I think we gotta heat it up somehow. I just got this sanding attachment from my Dremel and this should make getting in all these cracks and all these tighter areas so much easier. A lot of the gel coat along this ridge has been compromised so I've been sanding that off. Mostly working on it with this Dremel tool. Definitely should have just bought a less crappy boat in the first place, but hey, I learned a lot. So I've got pretty much all the paint off the sides. Um, the gel coat up on top of those ledges right there was pretty chipped, so I sanded all that off. I'm taking the gel coat off of the front because all this stuff is cracked. Um, and over here, the fiberglass is really thin. It's soft. I can feel the foam under there. Um, so I'm going to need to glass over all this. Like right there, the foam is even a little bit visible maybe. No, that's just kind of yellow fiberglass. Let's go see how the boys are doing. Oh, what you making? Oh, that's going to be the, the pig spinner. Wow, that. hey, that's going to spin a pig, huh? Yeah, you just, uh, you know, you oh. right there. Wow. You stick the, the spinner thingy right on there. That's a big field-oriented control brushless servo motor. Isn't that a little overkill for spinning a yeah, pig? Yeah, I, uh, I was tuning control loops and writing code all of this afternoon. Wow, what's your proportional integral and derivative gain on there? <laughs> uh, Six? 218 uh, milli RPMs per milliamp, so yeah, RPM per milliamp. <laughs> that sounds like enough to spin a pig. I've been using these big old seven inch sanding wheels on my angle grinder and ooh wee, they take off the gel coat and the fiberglass like a, like a hot knife through butter, so a little too aggressive there. So I have to be really careful. If I hold it in the wrong place for more than like a half a second, it, it goes too deep. And I've definitely gone too deep in a lot of places. Like there's some pretty uh, some pretty soft spots that I'm gonna have to put a, another layer of glass over. So we are almost ready to start doing fiberglass repairs and fairing compound. I think all this grinding is by far the worst part. There was some metal hardware that I had to take off, but turns out this anchor guide was glued on pretty well. Let's go check in on that pig. This pig has been brining in rust. <laughs> oh god, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> there was also this steel eye bolt that goes through the entire hole that I had to take off. There's this little recessed area that runs around the deck of the boat, and it looks like there's screw heads underneath the gel coat, but turns out those are actually from the mold that the boat was made with. At first I was just going to leave this the way it was, but I ended up grinding out a lot of the gel coat from inside of it. This big curved angle grinder wheel was great for that, but I also ended up using a Dremel tool for a lot of it. Look at that. That's just a fat chunk of fairing compound. I've been starting to strip down this top rail here. There's a lot of gnarliness along the edge here. A lot of what looks like to be old repairs. Um, there's some white gel coat under there. A lot of cracking going on. This is all just like, ooh, look at that. That's a big flapper right there. Not so good. So I think what I'm gonna do is just grind all this down as much as I can until um, I hit old glass or at least just get some of this flaky stuff off. Anyways, a lot of work to do here. <laughs> I feel like an archaeologist peeling back the layers of time. 
It looks like there's some fiberglass weave right here. Someone must have done a repair at some point. It feels pretty soft in here. I can kind of hear a little bit of cracking. As I was taking the gel coat off here, I uncovered some questionable areas. So then I just sanded off all the sketchy looking fiberglass and got down to the foam. So that's gonna need a lot of fiberglass repair. What I'm gonna have to do here is dig out the foam underneath the fiberglass and leave like a lip of fiberglass and then fill that all in with new fiberglass mash, which is, which is just basically like a bunch of random fibers and epoxy mixed together. And then kind of just build this back layer by layer of fiberglass. And back here too, there's, there's obviously a bunch of fairing compound that someone put here for a previous repair, so I'm gonna have to probably grind that out in there and put some new fiberglass mash in there and then build up more fiberglass on top of it. Let's go check in on that pig. This is not great. There's a lot of places with really soft fiberglass along the along the rail here. Oh, look at that. That's so bad. Oh, goodness gracious. Got all the stuff off here. This fiberglass is really thin. Here's a little before and after shot of the rail. There were a few spots that I took all the way down to the foam, which is generally not good, but considering that there's nothing really structurally sound over top of the foam, what are you going to do? I lay new fiberglass over all this anyways, so it doesn't really matter. There, that's soft. You see that? And then right there, just went right to the foam. Shoot, dang it. The fiberglass looks so pretty when you rub it down with some water and get all the dust off. Look at that. Wow. Let's go see what the boys are doing. Wow, wee, look at that, it's going. Yeah, it's got to weld a counterweight so this motor can, can rotate it. Oh, it doesn't have enough torque? No. Ah. Oh. Well, we're going to see what happens. It's pretty warm here. Yeah, I know. Oh, jeez. The charcoal's so hot, it's insane. Yeah. Can you rotate it to the right spot again? We got way too many coals. Really? I think Too not. many coals? Yeah. They got a whole bag in there. They're hot already. It's hot as fuck. I can't there. believe it. They got hot so fast. Wow, you're really doing some dynamic on. balancing on let the me, fly uh, here. Let me get the ground pipe on there. Well, at least we're gonna have one side of a cooked pig. It's so hot. We, it's, it's, the coals are way too hot. We right could here. shovel some out. I think that motor's gonna burn. Oh, it's still unbalanced. Our uh, deck is getting a little toasty. Still not balanced? Well, we'll have to put on a hand crank and Colin will have to crank it all day. It seems as though there's a void in between the fiberglass and the foam. So I'm going to drill a hole here and see what's underneath. There's foam down there. Big surprise. I think this is just kind of a thin section of fiberglass that's just kind of bowed up. So I'm going to drill some more holes in here and then uh, put some Gorilla Glue in there. Gorilla Glue foams up so it should fill this void. It's starting to foam up. needed a little rebalancing with the weights there. That works. This is running off of a Freefly Astro battery. Looks like we're pulling 4 amps, 5 amps, 7 amps. Direct drive, brushless field oriented control, position PID. <laughs> so the wrong thing for this. Um, the best part is this motor is about to incinerate. Oh yeah, and the deck's about to light on fire. I started to make the wood benches that would go in the boat, and this is what happens when you try and cut wood with a saw blade that doesn't have any teeth. <laughs> it's really dull. See if it fits now. Yeah, it does. Finally, after weeks of grinding and sanding, it was time for fairing compound. So I wiped all the dust off the whole boat and went around with a sharpie and marked all the places that had thin fiberglass and then marked the places that needed fairing compound. Not all of them, but just some of the bigger ones. Do some fairing compound over some of the, the crevices. I already kind of started there. I'm just gonna fill in that circle. I think it's probably for a fishing bucket or something, but I don't, I don't do no fishing, so I'm just gonna fill in that hole and then glass over it. Let's go see how that pig is doing. I think we, we should- 165 just a bit ago. I think we should, I think we should like nuclear wasteland, get it to like 190 before we serve it. Okay, let's pump it. Wow. 
if you don't know, Farin compound is basically just epoxy mixed with uh, little glass balls. They're called glass micro balloons. And this gives the epoxy some thickness so that you can kind of mold it in or spread it into cracks. It's used to fill cracks and holes, kind of like uh, an aesthetic filler. So it's nice because it's really easy to sand after it hardens. So it's the next day. All this fairing compound is hard now, so I'm going to start sanding it down smooth. All that stuff is covering holes in the gel coat that I sanded down. Oh my god, it's a squirrel. This back little cubby section of the boat was really rough. The gel coat back here was the worst out of anywhere, so I did a lot of grinding in there. There were just like a lot of holes and stuff from the Dremel and the ankle grinder, so this part needed a lot of fairing compound, but it turned out pretty good. It's very difficult to sand in areas like this. I'm going to be laying down new fiberglass in some of the areas that I'm putting fairing compound on. But the fairing compound is useful because it allows you to lay the fiberglass down flat so that it's not having to conform to all the little cracks and crevices. So I guess in that sense, it's not just aesthetic. So I've got most of the fairing compound in this area all sanded. So now I think I'm going to lay down some more fiberglass in here. The reason I'm doing fairing compound under the fiberglass is because it's really bumpy in there. Here I was realizing that some of the corners were really structurally weak. Like I was just poking right through the fiberglass in this corner. So I needed to structurally reinforce these areas somehow. I ended up kind of making my own fairing compound some of the time with uh, just by mixing up epoxy and then adding these glass microspheres. I was also ripping up little stray fiberglass strands and stuffing them into the holes to add extra strength. That ended up working pretty well, but it was definitely a little bit harder to sand than just fairing compound alone. That's probably a good thing though, because it means it's stronger. Here you can see I'm just stuffing those fibers that are soaked in epoxy into this hole. There must have been some damage in the fiberglass here that I carved out. There were also a few spots in the rail that I did this to, but I ended up doing a lot more fiberglass repair to the rail later. Okay, so you take. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Take. Okay, make room, make room. It's hot! 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 And I'm going to reinforce um, these corners here because they are pretty thin from all the sanding and whatever happened before I got this boat. This is the point at which I learned there's crappy fiberglass and there's good fiberglass. I think this fiberglass that I'm using must be like uh, lower thread count, like thicker threads, because it's much harder to get it to lay down and wet out into, into curves and crevices. So... In the future, I'm definitely going to be trying to find higher quality fiberglass. Also, I put one layer of 6 ounce glass into these corners, and in hindsight, I probably should have put thicker fiberglass or more layers of it in there. With only one layer of 6 ounce fiberglass, you end up sanding through a lot of it anyways, so there's not much left for structural rigidity. I am a fan of working with fiberglass, but it's definitely pretty messy. After all that epoxy cured, I went through and sanded everything, all these corners, by hand. There's not really a good way to do that with a power tool. This is called 1708 fiberglass mat, and it's really thick. Once it's wetted down with epoxy and cures, it's like 2 millimeters thick, which is quite a lot. So I'm laying this out over the entire bow of the boat, and then I'm going to wet it out with epoxy. This is a super coarse fiberglass mat, and it just drinks epoxy. And epoxy is really expensive, so this is not the cheapest way to do it. A lot of people working on bigger boat projects like this will use polyester resin, which is a lot cheaper, but it also stinks, and uh, I like epoxy. I actually don't know if it stinks. The stuff that I've used stinks, but maybe it's just crappy. I'm not sure. Anyways, I ended up going with epoxy for this just because it's what I'm used to working with. So after the epoxy cured, I sanded it. You really can't sand this stuff down to a smooth surface because it's too coarse, so you need some fairing compound later. Here I start opening up some of the damaged areas and previous repairs on the rail. 
Now what I learned from looking at old Boston Whaler repair instructions was that when there's a damaged section, you want to grind down into the foam and create like an overhang in the fiberglass around the damage. Um, and that kind of gives like a lip for you to shove new fiberglass under and like tuck it up under the pre-existing fiberglass. So the new fiberglass will like cling to the damaged area or the, the fiberglass around the damaged area better. So for that reason, you need to really just grind out all the crap, all the old repairs and all the damaged spots and just get rid of all that stuff to make room for your own repairs. It looked like at some point someone had filled some pretty big holes in the rail on this thing with a lot of fairing compound, so I dremeled all that out. This is probably the worst damage in all of the side rail right here. I just dremeled out a lot of this. There's still a lot of questionable chunks left in there, but I'm just going to fill in this big gouge that I made and then glass over all of it. <laughs> pretty well. And that's that. That's how you cook a pig with an oil drum. So once I had a bunch of holes in the side of the rail, I started filling it all in with fiberglass mash. It's basically just epoxy with some microspheres in it and a lot of chopped glass fibers. I was using packaging tape to make like little dams on the side of the holes that I had created. And then I would just fill those dams with this fiberglass mash and then fold them over to kind of create the shape of the side rail of the boat. Not perfect, of course. It needs a lot of sanding after it cures, but it worked. I did this over and over. There were probably 10 spots along the rail of the boat that I had to make this kind of a repair on. Here's the hole that I made by taking off that anchor guide um, it took a pretty big chunk of the fiberglass with it, so I'm filling that in with fiberglass mash. And I taped over it and then removed the tape and sanded it down nice and flat. So there was still a lot of really thin fiberglass along the rail, and I wanted a way to kind of hold my repairs in um, and strengthen everything, so I'm putting new fiberglass over the entire rail. This is more of that 1708 glass that I, I actually ended up only using this stuff on one side of the rail. So here's wetting that down. Um, this, this glass is really thick, so it was difficult to kind of get this stuff to uh, lay down flat. It kept wanting to peel up. So that's why I ended up having to tape over the entire thing. And I had a layer of plastic sheet underneath the tape so that the tape wouldn't get stuck to it permanently. Kind of like a release film kind of a thing. And then once that cured, I pulled off all the tape and the surface was okay. There was quite a lot of like kind of little air pockets in it. It wasn't held down super well. It's not like a vacuum bagging type of result, but it worked well enough. So then I sanded that down flat or at least relatively flat. Like I said before, this 1708 fiberglass is pretty coarse. So I had to paint on a lot of extra epoxy to fill a lot of the little voids after that. So to try and avoid having to tape down the fiberglass again, on the other side I just went with multiple layers of 6 ounce glass. Also not ideal because this was the, the lower thread count fiberglass that I was talking about earlier that's lower quality, but it ended up working fairly well. Yesterday I finished putting 6 layers of 6 ounce glass over this edge, so today I'm going to sand that once it warms up later this afternoon and fully cures. I sanded it with the orbital sander and the angle grinder, and then put on some more epoxy to kind of finish filling out all the little voids in the glass fiber. Now this whole front part here looks like it's been damaged and rebuilt a time or two, so uh, it looks like this is all fairing compound and repairs, and the fiberglass kind of ends right here, and then who knows what's under all this. So I'm just gonna do another layer of glass and just wrap it around this whole front edge kind of encapsulate everything, hold it on there. I went with the six ounce glass again for the front part. It would have been really hard to put the thicker fiberglass over these contours, that's for sure. And then after I was done fiberglassing on the top of the boat, I wet sanded everything. As epoxy cures, it kind of creates this amine blush on the surface. This is kind of like a waxy coating that forms and it will prevent gel coat from sticking. Luckily it's water soluble, so to get rid of it I was just wet sanding all the fiberglass that I had laid down. We gotta say goodbye to our friend now. 
So it was almost time to flip the boat over, but first let's take a look at the trailer. This was a custom trailer that someone had put together and kind of fitted specifically for this boat. All the weight of the hull was resting on mostly these rollers in the center, but also some wooden blocks in the back. And there were also some boards towards the front with like rubber hose screwed onto them that was supporting some of the front weight of the front part of the bow but there were no big long bunks in the back like normal boat trailers have. And I feel like bunks are probably the best way to distribute most of the weight and prevent acute damage from too much weight being on some of these plastic or uh, rubber rollers. So I wasn't super stoked on this trailer. Not to mention it was kind of falling apart. So I had the boys help me lift the boat off and take it into the yard to flip over. Then I put the trailer back into the driveway and laid some sawhorses out on the driveway to hold the boat once it's upside down. Then we lifted it back over and set it in place. I'm guessing this trailer was used in salt water quite a bit, and it was also just left out in the open air under the elements for many years. So this is what happens when you do that to a steel trailer. Like look at that thing, it's completely busted apart. That bolt is completely not even touching anymore. At this point, I wasn't sure whether I would keep this thing and try and fix it up or just get a new one. So I cut off some of these U-bolts uh, that were holding the axle onto the leaf springs and replaced them with some brand new stainless steel ones. Damn, that's some rusty metal. <laughs> There's just chunks of rust like this coming off. That is, that's so thick. That's like a quarter inch thick of just rust. What the hell? This is where things really started to go south with the trailer. I took the wheel off to check the quality of the wheel bearings and I was unable to get the rear seal off without kind of damaging it and I could not find a replacement for this rear wheel bearing seal anywhere. It's some obscure size, probably from like a Slovakian tractor that was manufactured one year. <laughs> I don't, anyway, anyways, it was, I could not find it for the life of me. So at that point I just decided to post this trailer up on Craigslist for like 30 bucks and just get rid of it. Now that we've got it flipped over, let's see what we're dealing with on the bottom side. We got a lot of cracks in the existing gel coat, and then the previous owner looks like fiberglassed over some of the cracks in the gel coat. Like right here, you can see a bunch of these pock marks. That means really compromised, damaged gel coat, and then glassed over it, so that's not great. Here's one of the really bad areas. You can see all the pock marks in here. <clears throat> Looks like there could be some damage under here, too, of the actual fiberglass itself. Not sure. I'll have to grind away all this gel coat and then see what's going on. Kind of seems like this whole area was probably damaged at some point. The whole side of the boat is going to be a challenge, too, because there's some damaged spots where I'm going to have to put new glass over this um, corner radius right here. So that's going to be tricky. There are a few soft sections, like right here. That's going to be a big issue, so I should probably drill holes and fill that all up with expanding foam or glue or something. At this point, I was only planning on putting fiberglass over a few of the more damaged spots on the bottom of the boat, but as you'll see, I ended up just doing the entire thing. So here I am laying out one section of fiberglass. This is the uh, 1708 stuff. See how this stuff just kind of like flakes apart? Those little divots are just popping out like that. That's not good. That's a uh, bad gel coat. The previous guy who owned this boat, he was just fiberglassing over a lot of that really bad stuff. So that's not good. You're not supposed to do that, but I'll probably just leave his fiberglass here because I'm not trying to fiberglass over this entire boat. So what I ended up doing was kind of sanding off all the old repairs and the new fiberglass that the last guy had laid down that were on the edges of where I would be laying down new swaths of fiberglass. And that was so that the kind of the edges of the fiberglass that I was laying down would have um, something rigid to adhere to, like just bare fiberglass underneath, like the original fiberglass to adhere to. But the questionable sections with the compromised gel coat were kind of in the middle, away from any edges. So they would be much less likely to delaminate and cause any issues of fiberglass peeling up. Got all of this 
Wet it out. This is all new fiberglass. It's a lot of epoxy. <laughs> Expensive. One big issue is that this leading edge here has become quite narrow and rounded over the years, whereas it should be more flat and rectangular like that side. Um, if you look over here, this side is better. See that's kind of nice and flat there. Um, and if I want to put a rub rail on this boat, um, which is like a plastic and vinyl rail that goes around the whole perimeter to protect it against rubbing on the dock and stuff like that, I'm going to need a nice flat front end like this. So I'm going to try and build up this part a bit. It's gotten really narrow by putting some tape over the front here like this and then kind of using that as a dam to hold epoxy and fiberglass um, down in here to create the thickness. So let's give that a shot. The epoxy dam has been filled. I have uh, blue painter's tape kind of holding the shape and then some well, it's basically kind of like thick electrical tape on the bottom to seal it and there's quite a lot of epoxy on here so this is heating up. It's not a perfect shape by any means so it'll take some sanding but that's okay. So this was the real expensive part of the restoration. I laid out a lot of fiberglass and it drank up a lot of epoxy. Several hundred dollars worth of fiberglass and epoxy, for sure. I think this epoxy is like $100 a gallon, $200 a gallon, so not cheap. When you watch fiberglassing tutorials online, everyone uses one of these uh, fin rollers to wet out the fiberglass, but I ended up using a paintbrush to do a lot of it. The fin rollers were nice for some stuff, but for a lot of other stuff, just dabbing the paintbrush seemed much better. It kind of wetted it out more quickly. I guess everyone has their own technique that works for them. The 1708 fiberglass that I laid down on the top of the hull cannot bend sharp enough to conform to the little keel ridge that runs along the entire length of the hull. So I sanded that area and then laid down a few layers of new six ounce glass. Wetted that out, did the front bit, and then sanded it down smooth. I also grinded the gel coat off these little fins in the back of the boat and glassed over those with a bunch of layers of higher quality six ounce glass. I added quite a bit of glass to those because if I ever drag the boat up on a sandy beach or something, those are gonna be getting a lot of abrasion. I laid down new six ounce glass ribbon in this crevice around the underside of the rim of the boat and wetted that all out. I also did 1708 glass around the sides of the hull. That stuff did not adhere to the sharp contour um, on the top here, so I had to fill in a bunch of little gaps with fairing compound. That allowed me to then come in later and sand the edge smooth to a nice smooth radius. And I repeated that process to the other side. Things are looking pretty good on the front end. This is all glassed. It's not smooth by any means, so I need to do a lot of surfacing on this, but pretty much glassed the entire bottom of the boat. Actually, not pretty much. I did glass the entire bottom of the boat with about two millimeters of new fiberglass. Uh, except for this little thin side. Wow, look at that guy. Oh, spooky. Except for this little side rail right here, but that feels pretty structurally sound, so I don't don't think I need glass on there. But yeah, this is all feeling super solid. My thickened rail looks great. I need to sand that down now. This is how much gel coat I collected. Holy crap. So I sanded everything. Um, this is just the thick fiberglass, but now there's a lot of texture showing through, so... I'm going to paint on another layer of epoxy, um, but first I'm going to do fairing compound on a few problem areas, like the edge of the fiberglass in here. You can see how there's gaps, um, and there's a bunch of holes, a bunch of pockets um, that were air pockets under the fiberglass. Yeah, just going to need some fairing. So this will all need to be sanded down um, and kind of filled in the gaps here with the fairing compound. And then it will need to be sanded once it's fully cured. This is also fairing compound here along the front, filling in a lot of gaps. After laying down all the fiberglass on top, there were just one or two or three spots where um, there was air under the fiberglass, so I've had to kind of pick those apart and then I'm gonna shove fairing compound and all that to make it flat again. If there's any air pockets under the fiberglass then the fiberglass will flex in and that will cause the gel coat on top to crack. It's 
some of the weave I put on um, along this edge rail is just not looking too great after sanding, so that's got to get wetted down. So I made one mistake, which was to put new epoxy on top of old epoxy that was fully cured and before I had done any sanding to it, so it was smooth and then it did not stick very well and now it's just peeling off, so I gotta sand all that off now. I didn't do the whole boat, that's just in a few little areas. Finally, after I was done with epoxy and fairing compound, I wet sanded everything to get rid of the amine blush to get ready for the gel coat. So that required a lot more sanding. So I hosed off the boat today and got all the dust off of it. So now it just needs one more wipe down with acetone before I can spray it with gel coat. Um, it's not the smoothest, like there's some texture to it. I just don't think it's worth getting it down to a perfectly polished smooth finish. The gel coat will help even out a little bit of the roughness. I figured that I could move the boat by myself just by inching the sawhorses forward each one a few inches at a time. It actually worked pretty well. Miraculously I didn't tip the whole thing over. So finally it's time for gel coat. I turned the whole tent into a spray booth by hanging plastic from the sides and bought myself an air compressor and a spray gun specifically an HVLP spray gun with a 2.5 millimeter nozzle and bought a few gallons of gel coat. So gel coat is a resin and then to catalyze it, you add methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. I was doing about a 2% ratio of that stuff. This was my first time spraying gel coat, let alone paint or anything. So I did some tests on a piece of plywood and then once I got the dials on the spray gun kind of tuned all right-ish, I moved on to the back of the boat. Now in hindsight, I'm really not sure if I should have gel coated this boat because the primary purpose of gel coat is to use in laminating stuff in a mold. So when they're molding these boats, uh, the gel coat is the first thing they spray onto the mold. Because it's the first thing they spray in the mold, it ends up being the surface of the boat. So spraying it on like this is kind of, there, there might be better options, like some sort of an epoxy based paint. But in hindsight, it's probably a good idea that I went with gel coat because you put it on much thicker than an epoxy paint. Um, and since it's thick, it gives you more uh, width to work with to sand and kind of smooth things out more and create a smoother surface finish. Because my epoxy and fiberglass wasn't the smoothest. I sanded it a lot, but there was still some unevenness in the surface. So still not entirely sure if gel coat was the best option for me here, but it worked out all right in the end. Once you catalyze the gel coat, you only have about 20 minutes to work with it before it starts to gel up. So I was only able to spray about probably one sixth of the hull at a time, or maybe even one eighth of the hull at a time before I had to clean the gun <laughs> and mix new gel coat and do the whole thing over again. So that was a pain in the ass, a lot of work. The interesting thing about gel coat is it never fully cures on its own. Whenever oxygen is in contact with gel coat, it will not cure. So you need some sort of an oxygen inhibitor that will keep oxygen away from the top layer of the gel coat and that allows everything underneath it to cure. Typically people put wax in the final layer of gel coat that they spray on top and the wax kind of floats to the surface and keeps oxygen away from the, the layers underneath it. But I was using this Duratec gel coat additive. Um, probably didn't need it, but it's supposed to give you a shinier surface finish and it, it kind of replaces the need for wax. In the top layer so in hindsight probably didn't need that but it seemed to work all right i guess i think i added it in a one-third mixture uh, one-third duratec to one-third gel coat so that's quite a bit and it also kind of thins it out a bit which makes it easier to spray so then i catalyzed it with the methyl ethyl ketone peroxide mixed it up poured it in the spray gun and started spraying once again for whatever reason my gel coat didn't really seem to fully cure on its own. So I had to spray something else on top to keep the oxygen off of it. So I chose PVA. PVA is a mold release film, or I guess it's used for a lot of stuff, but one of the primary purposes is a mold release film. Um, it's water soluble and it, it basically just forms a plastic film. So I sprayed that over the gel coat and then let it sit for a few days um, before finally wiping that PVA. It's kind of got the green tint, you can see it there. And then uh, I wiped that off with water afterwards, and that seemed to leave a nice hard gel coat surface finish. It was ready for sanding. Damn, look at that boat. That's, uh, that looks pretty good. So the surface finish isn't super smooth, so now I just have to wet sand it. Here's a little demo of what the surface looked like before I started sanding. 
and then I went through all the different grits. I did, I think I started with like 180 grit or something like that, and then moved all the way up to like 400 grit, and that left me with a pretty nice smooth surface finish. That's pretty flat. So doing this to the entire hull took a few days. It was a lot of work. And then after that, I added wax, and the wax kind of fills the pores of the gel coat to protect it more. So it's very important, I hear. And this is what I ended up with. Looks like a boat if you ask me, so I'm happy. It's not perfect, but good enough. While the boat was still upside down, I was underneath doing some last minute uh, fairing compound repairs. I was wiping fairing compound into this crevice around the deck. Then I got some boys to help out and we lifted the boat off of the sawhorses into the yard, flipped it over, some lady distracted everyone with her dog, and then we put it back on this new trailer that I got from Colin's friend who crashed his boat into the pole at night. So I bought that trailer, it's pretty nice. It was a lot more small and compact than the other one too, which is great. Rolled that into the tent, and then got ready for painting the top. Here's Colin demonstrating his deadlift technique. <laughs> As I was spraying off some of the dust with an air compressor, I accidentally sprayed it into a few little holes in the deck, and you can see it balloon up like that, so it delaminated the, uh, the fiberglass underneath from the foam. So that's not good. So to fix that, I ended up trying to inject as much uh, Gorilla Glue into those holes as possible. Gorilla Glue foams up and fills all the voids. Then I washed all the dust and everything out of the top of the boat to get it ready for painting. So I had a lot of this white gel coat left over from the bottom, so I ended up just kind of painting that onto the top of the deck. I decided to paint the top instead of spray it, just to try out something different. And in hindsight, I wish I would have sprayed it. Spraying is much better. You get a much smoother surface finish, but it worked. Painting it worked. So, whatever. I decided to not paint the deck because it's knurled, and I didn't want to have to deal with the knurled surface, and it wasn't in that bad a condition anyway, so I just left it. And I put tape around the edges to keep the new gel coat off the deck, painted the entire inside of the boat white, and then started with the blue gel coat. I only bought a quart of this blue gel coat. It was a sprayable gel coat, but I ran out of that pretty quick, so then I had to buy some new gel coat. And you can actually buy gel coat that's made to be brushed on. So I bought a bunch of that. It's a bit thicker and it kind of does a better job at evening out to uh, make a smoother surface finish. And then I painted the rest of the, the inside with that. Here's removing this tape. Ooh, that's so satisfying. Look at those, look at those nice sharp lines. And after quite a lot of work, damn, that's one good looking boat if you ask me. Mostly, except for the, the odd colored kind of dirty deck, but whatever, just don't look at that part. The rest of it looks pretty nice. Good enough. Was it worth two months of hard labor? Uh, I probably would have just rather bought a more expensive one in the first place, but oh well. However, I think I made a big mistake, which was painting on this gel coat when it was too cold, so it was not curing very well. So I also sprayed PVA onto that to hopefully allow it to fully cure. So after the PVA dried and I washed it off, I then started waxing the entire top part. Check out my tree of clamps. So that just about sums up the repair job for the fiberglass hull itself. So now we just have to deal with some of the hardware and finishing touches. I got some vinyl Boston Whaler decals just in case I ever want to sell the boat. It'll probably increase the value quite a bit. And it also just looks good. So I put one on this side and another one on the other side. Classic. What a good looking boat. Now it was time to remount the anchor guide back onto the front. I cleaned up a little bit of the corrosion with a wire brush on my Dremel, but this thing still wasn't in mint condition by any means, so whatever. So I drilled some holes in the fiberglass, filled those with silicone sealant, also put some silicone on the bottom of the anchor guide itself, and screwed that into the fiberglass. Next I drilled all the way through the hull to mount the eye bolt that the trailer winch connects to. The drill bits kind of chip the gel coat if you're not careful, so I used a Dremel to kind of abrade those holes out once I had drilled them at a smaller diameter. Here's the eyelet that I'm using for the bottom. It has these two little spikes that are meant to dig into the fiberglass, 
So I put some marks where those little spikes connect with the boat and then used my Dremel to bore out some little holes for those spikes to go into. I had to cut that bolt down to size and then put some silicone sealant onto everything and stick it into the hole. Also sealed up the top side around the hole and put on this little ring nut. This is all stainless steel hardware, so it won't rust. So these are called Norman pins, and it's kind of what they used instead of cleats back then, uh, in 1972, I guess. Um, the ones that came with the boat were quite corroded, so I had to clean them up a bit before reinstalling them. I stuck a wire brush on the drill press, and this was good for cleaning up the threads. And then I did sandpaper for the, the pin itself. Went from coarse sandpaper up through to finer grit. And I got them looking pretty shiny. Not perfect, there's still some gouges, but whatever. Then I did silicone sealant around the holes, put a big washer in there, and stuck the pin through, and put the other side of the pin with the female threads on the other side. Here's the one on the bow. You can see how it goes on there. And there's really no way to grab these things very well to tighten them, so I just had to use vice grips with some um, paper towels to protect them from getting scratched. That worked okay. I needed some connection points to strap the boat down to the trailer with, so I got some big stainless steel U-bolts and drilled some holes in the hull here, back by the transom. Also kind of bored out the back with the Dremel a little bit to prevent the gel coat from chipping. And then cut the U-bolt down to size, gooped up the holes with silicone sealant, and stuck it through. And then on the back side, there's an, a flat metal plate that goes in between the two nuts, like a washer kind of. So that went pretty well. Hopefully it's strong enough to hold the boat down to the trailer when I take it off a jump. Next, it was time for the rub rail. The stuff came in a box all wrapped up in a coil, and it was almost impossible to lay out flat. So I had to pull it out and stretch it as straight as possible, and then I ran a heat gun up and down the length of it to try and get it to remember that position. And that only worked a little bit. It was still really difficult to get to lay down straight on the edge of the boat. So I would just use a drill bit and drill a hole th right through the... This is just the plastic rail that the rubber rail will attach to. So I have to mount that to the boat first. So I just drill, drill through it and then drill straight on through into the fiberglass and then just screw it on. I didn't feel super solid about this installation because there was really not a lot of fiberglass for these screws to bite into. So maybe pop rivets would have been better, but I've never done that. I don't have the rivet tool. So screws, they, they seem to work well enough. I'm sure it'll last for quite a while. But I would just put some silicone sealant in the screw hole before threading the screw into there. And then once that was laid around the entire outer perimeter of the boat, not including the back, I then pushed the rubber rub rail onto that extruded plastic piece and you do that just by bending it sharply and then just like kind of kneading it on they give you a little plastic cap to uh, secure the the end to the back of the boat with so I put that through screwed it on and that's the rub rail looks pretty good next it was time to move on to some of the wood bits so here's the benches that I cut with that super dull saw blade earlier I was sanding them with my big seven inch uh, angle grinder sander wheel and Boy, does that thing sand quickly. <laughs> this creates plumes of sawdust. And then I varnished those. That will waterproof them and protect them from UV. This piece of wood was the front locker cover that came with the boat. And I decided that instead of uh, cutting a new one out, I would just try and restore this old one. It had some pretty big cracks in it. And the whole, the whole board would like bend on those cracks. So I had to uh, fix that somehow. So first I sanded off all the paint. And then I mixed up some fairing compound and pushed as much of that as possible into all those cracks and that uh, made the board rigid again. And then once that dried, I sanded the fairing compound and painted it. This paint ended up looking terrible, so I ended up doing a, another layer of white primer on top of this and then painting it again. But anyways, then the company Snapmaker sent me their CNC machine slash laser cutter slash 3D printer combo machine. And I wanted to use this to laser cut some vinyl for this boat. So I removed the 3D print head and mounted on the laser head. And yes, when I plugged it in, the laser did turn on. It was super sketchy. And then I replaced the 3D printed bed with this laser cutting bed. It's like aluminum extrusion with little fins. And then started cutting some blue vinyl. It cut pretty well with this laser. It's uh, 1500 milliwatt or 1600 milliwatt. So I used this to cut the registration number for the bow. 
Believe it or not, I legally registered my boat. So responsible. And then I just stuck those letters onto the front on both sides. And it looks pretty good if you ask me. Looks like I just went and bought them from the store. I had some extra vinyl, so I made a nice little sticker for my roommate's car. Looks pretty good. Here are some shots of the finished boat. All in all, I was quite happy with how this turned out. It definitely seems seaworthy. And wow, what a summer that was. I spent the entire time on this freaking boat hull, but it felt so good to finally get done. And now it's time to move on to the motors. And spoiler alert, it does float. So stay tuned for the next video because I'll be 3D printing brushless outboard motors for this boat. It's going to use two e-foil motors that are submerged. Those run underwater. So that should be fun. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.